Hey, yo guys, just want to let you know, I do stream free Trials, Flaws, Carries help over here on my Twitch every Friday and Monday, so if you guys are interested in that, it would be greatly appreciated if you guys could go over there and drop me a follow. Anyways, thank you. Alright everyone, what's up, what's up? It's another week at Bungie here. It is August 19th, currently the last weekend, or the last week of the this season here, so next season will be right around this week, so next season is on Tuesday. Let's get right into it. So this week at Bungie, we're talking about weapons. This is it, last 12 of the season. It's been a blast watching Guardians splice through their way through the Vex network, tackle Vault Glass, pile up rewards and stuff, uh, jam pack, a lot of Destiny moments. Okay, cool. Trailer stuff. I'll skip through this, guys. I'm um, just going to go right into whatever's. Um, less than a week, yep, until the big reveal. So Witch Queen and the new season will be revealed on the Tuesday. So make sure you guys are uh, tuned in there. Be 9 a.m. Uh, a. Pacific. Okay, uh, weapon tuning right here. Next week's update is ushing in a new season and a big sandbox update to go with it. We have already covered ability tuning and armor mod changes, which obviously were in the last uh, week's swab. Now it's time to go over with whatever the weapons are. We'll change it with weapons. So Chris uh, Proctor is actually the weapons future lead, um, future lead for the uh, game. So I said, good day. It's Chris again. We've got a lot to talk about for season 15, including stasis weapons, a rework of fusion rifles, and several changes intended to make certain weapons more relevant in the new activity and with the new artifact mods. Let's kick off by clarifying some technology. All right. So there is some terms that he wants to go over. So there is um, first term we're going to talk about is fall off. Internally, we use fall off min and max to mean start and end. But moving forward, we'll use these externally using damage as an example, but with the same logic applies to aim assist and whatnot. So damage fall off start is the distance at which the damage fall off begins or stops doing maximum damage and damage fall off end is the distance at which the f damage fall off ends or hits the damage floor all right so projectiles uh we've used various terms to describe these types externally including both terms from other genres oops and uh, set all on these so yeah basically if you guys don't know i'm gonna just dump it down an example projectiles are weapons that are not hit scan so what happens is, is there's gonna be lead time it's like you're playing a battle royale any like the weapons in like a battle royale or all those all those bullets are projectile based they're not hit scan based so you're gonna have to lead your shots at further ranges because it's like you're not shooting like a, a super high velocity like uh you know a super high velocity object you're, sh you're shooting something with a slightly lower velocity so it has some lead time but um in destiny the hit skin weapons are a projectile that hits inst uh, instantly hits so that's for uh, most weapons in the game which are auto rifles hand cans fusion rifles oh wait yeah a uh, fusion rifles and fully drawn bows at most distance distances and uh, non hit scan are, are projectile with travel time so they sometimes have uh, physics bounces and often have explosive damage, so rock launches, GLs, and partially drawn bows and Joan. Yeah, those are all projectile. All right, so first thing we're talking about is shotgun change. Shotgun, the spread angle, the cone that the pellets come out in, not to be confused with the other types of cones, is uh, this determines the size of the outer ring. So spread angle is, is the size of the, the individual ring there in the middle. Destiny shotguns do not have don't have pure RNG for pallet distribution. Although, uh, though, yes, it sure feels like sometimes, which seems worth diving into. Okay, so they're saying that the shotguns are not don't have pure RNG, so they're actually consistent apparently. So we'll, uh, we'll get right into it. Shotgun contains twelve pellets. Yep, so it's one pound in the middle, four wedges on the inner ring, and seven on the outer ring. Makes sense. Aside from the center, which is fixed location, each pellet is only randomized inside a defined wedge and angle. Okay, so it's always uh, just separate to its own. Um, at a ring there all right globally season 15 introduces legendary stasis weapons and we've seen some concern about how these are intended to work particularly in pvp so here are some details stasis power weapons are in the power slot but all other stasis weapons are in the kinetic slot this is avoid overcrowding overcrowding the energy slot so let's do that again stasis power weapons are in the power slot but all other stasis weapons are in the kinetic slot this is to avoid overcrowding the energy slot. Okay, so all these weapons are now uh, going to be kinetic slot, other than the power ones. So it's reasonable to, to use one in matching game content. I, the kinetic slot won't be renamed at this time, so it's going to still still say kinetic. It's just uh, it's going to be stasis weapons in there. Stasis weapons don't intrinsically intrinsically do anything different from weapons of other damage types, but they are the only weapons that can roll with stasis perks. Okay, so stasis has its own perks. We generally intend stasis perks to with slowing or freezing effects. We generally intend stasis perks with slowing or freezing effects to have a kill trigger. This being easy enough to trigger in PvE and fun to use, but not obnoxious to play against in PvP. 
now that we've ad addressed quick does permanent plus 100 handling buff we see more people using the quick quick swap glitch this glitch uses a combination of inputs you have to, to slide to cancel swap so uh, we don't want the hand handling staff to commit valuable weapons, for example, aggressive shotguns. Okay, so yeah, they basically just fixed the quick, uh, quick swap glitch. You cannot uh, quick swap glitch anymore. Um, obviously, it was a bug, so it makes sense. All right, running out of primary ammo has never been tactically interesting. Running out of hard PvE content because you're in PvP. Flushing experience. All right, so here you go. All primary ammo weapons now have infinite ammo. Okay, so primary weapons all have infinite ammo now. I guess that's in PvP as well then. Alright. All primary ammo have infinite ammo. Alright. Inertia override has been adjusted to the count for there being no primary bricks. Wait, what? Oh, inertia override has been adjusted for no primary bricks. Alright, so they just buffed inertia override initially just because there's no primary ammo bricks now. It's only going to be special. Alright. Drop Meg's downside has of reducing reserve ammo is now almost meaningless. So rework to be plus reload and minus magazine stat. Okay, so um, that is the change there for drop mag. Compact arrow shafts inside uh, reserve ammo likewise. Rework to be plus reload and plus handling. All right, so you can now get extra handling from those. Update some other person refer to the reserves in which way they're no longer accurate. See notes on fight line and sweet business. All right, fight line and sweet business are going to get some uh, changes um, soon, so. All right, target farming trials weapons is much more efficient in season 15. And we have some cool new perks for players to play with that we wanted to put on trials weapons. All trials weapons available in season 15 now have seven perks in each column. What's five? All right. So now there's new uh, perks for all uh, trials weapons. All right, that's cool. When max power weapons on uh, max power weapons, what levels on weapons launch we reissued several weapons we saw how frustrated players were at having to reground their favorite roles since the perk pools hadn't changed based on that we reissued guidelines from season 13 onwards were to replace most of the perks turns out that that was an overcorrection and that certain perks in the original pools have been part of the identity of a weapon moving forward the guideline for reissues it will be removed at least two or three useful uh least useful four perks and add two or three newer perks that give the weapon some options and result entirely new uh, top tier laws, well, remove the old ones. All right, that's pretty cool. We made some small adjustments to weapons reissued in 3.21. All right, so added one or two of the original perks to each column for the Luna weapons reissued. Oh, okay. So they added one or two more perks to one of the uh, the weapons for the Moon weapons, right? That's cool. Since this, these can be target farmed, we're okay with increasing the size of the perk pool in this case. Added one of the uh, original perks to one of the uh, one or both columns for the Dreaming City weapons reissued in 3.21. So Twilight Oath, Target Spy, and Abide. Okay, so they're also getting more perks as well. Since these can't be target farmed yet, we don't want to increase the size of the pool by more than one. Yeah, it makes sense. Because it's harder to get, um, you know, hard to get snap, um, your snapshot roll for Twilight Oath or something. All right. Archetypes. All right. So Breach Grenade Launchers, finally. Exotics receive these changes as written otherwise mentioned. Okay, so Breach Grenade Launchers are increasing <laughs> as a pain point in PvP. And with a shotgun nerf, we've seen a small increase in usage. This change aims to reduce the ease of getting big splash damage for priming or cleaning targets. We'll watch how things change and we'll make further adjustments in the future update if needed. All right, so reduced blast damage radius by 0.4 meters. So max blast radius decreased from 4.55 to 4.5. So that's like, I don't know, like a less than 20, 20% nerf. It's not that bad, I guess. Uh, minimum blast radius decreased from three. Okay, that's, yeah, that's bad. 3.8 to 3.4, so it's actually double 20% nerf, so it's going to be like around a 30% nerf on, on average, so um, that's, that's uh, not too good. Reduce splash damage by 20, so it takes the total direct damage for direct hits from 220 to 200. Alright, you can still one shot with that, so we'll see. Increase damage in PvE by 12%? Increase damage in PvE by 12%. Okay, so they're actually making it better in PvE, and with the horde is unaffected. All right, while machine guns surprise usage is piling high, we felt they were fulfilling the intended role in higher difficult content. All right, increased damage in PV by 20%. So machine guns are going to be way better in PV. And scout rifles and hand cans have felt weaker than we'd like to hard PV content for a while. Increased damage versus miners by 15%. So scout rifles and hand cans will be able to, you know, one tap those ads way more easily. Or uh, more easy, I mean, sorry. All right, fusion rifles have benefited indirectly from the mid season 14 shotgun nerf. But fusion rifle subfamilies weren't as different from each other as we wanted. 
were were and weren't all useful in a variety of contexts. So we looked at all the options we had for diversifying them and ended up with some substantial changes. So it tended to make a global buff to fusions and a better counter to other weapons. All right, so we have giving the projectiles travel time. We did like the idea of this behavior in Destiny 1, but on investigation found that there are networking issues with rapid firing, rapid, uh, firing rapid bursts of non-hit scan projectile that didn't play as well as we wanted to. We may look at this option again in the future. Burst rate of fire. This would mean have meant touching design data and audio for every fusion rifle we've ever shipped. While beyond the scope, we wanted to for this change and also not, and also not that interesting a change. Okay. So did they do these or not? Let's see. Increased PV damage bonus such Okay, increased PV damage bonus such as all sub planets have 50% PV bonus. Alright, cool. Precision adaptive ten percent, rapid fire is twelve. Okay, so rapid fire just got better in PVE. Push sub players fire their part, adjusting charge time shots fired between bursts and seven for the sub seven. It uh, was seven for all sub players and damage, uh, charge time master mod. Okay, last well, without those. All right. So higher impacts charge slower while still ha ha uh, while still strong requiring more plan to use efficiently. Base charge time increased from 0.86 to one second. Shots per burst reduced from seven to five. Okay. Base charge time increased from 0 0.86 to 1 second. Shots per burst reduced from 7 to 5. Reduced total damage per burst. In places we found that charging these in the open is super risky, but pre-charging around corners is otherwise very a safety. With the reduced shots per burst, they're now less reliant on stability, so you can stack a bit more range. Oh, so they're more consistent because there are less bullets in the, in the burst. It's 5. So a lot of them basically have a lot of stability. That's cr that's kind of cracked, but just have a lot of long you know longer charge time. All right, precisions and adaptives are close to unchanged. Base charge time is unchanged. Shots per burst is unchanged at seven. Very slightly increased total damage per burst. All right. Implicitly, we feel that they're, uh, they're very effective all around without stepping on the niches of high impact reserves, rapid fires, we'll keeping a good uh, plug one for PVP. Okay, so uh, they're saying plug ones can be cracked. Rapid fires charge faster, allowing them to use to use reactively against charging enemies or aggressively when pushing forward. Base charge time decreased from 0.54 to 0.46. Shots per burst increased from 7 to 9. Increased total damage per burst. In playtesting, we found that these are very effective shotgun rushers. A combination of them needing to be closer. Okay, guys, rapid fires are a new meta. It's crazy. That's going to be so much insane. Okay. Um, short charge time work well. I fire two bursts with a rapid fire before I back. So you can actually fire two bursts of a rapid fire before a high impact can even charge one. That's just kind of crack. So that's insane. Increased shots per burst. There's more reliant on stability with increased damage and the rest of the range. So you want to get uh, stack your stability on the rapid fires. All right, guys. All right. Parts works. Uh, readjusting several fusion rifle mods. All right. And one mod. So backup plan implementation was incompatible with fusion rifle changes and we felt like it could perk, uh, perk user root anyways. So remove the plus 100 charge time to stat, adjusted the charge time multiplier from 0.85 to 0.7, now scales by 0.8, okay. So they just nerfed it, I think, right? Yeah, it just nerfed it a bit, all right. Um, okay. Liquid coils and accelerated coils needed a rework for some reason. Both created the scale, charge time, and damage instead of modifying the charge stat time. Fall back is the same as before, but they're they're now more robust. However, they won't visibly change charge time stat inspection screen. All right, it's all fine. Adept charge time mod felt pointless because it reduced damage. Change functionality, scale charge time directly instead of change the time stat on the gun. All right, okay, so now it doesn't adjust the damage. They increase time. All right. Uh, charge the master work. Charge time. What's this by making master work a perk? Change the budget. The bad things happening. Okay, whatever. With the Fissure of Rework, we will make this that the Masterwork is more viable, cool. So this plays out. Right. And adjusted the range uh, rifle stat order to make it sure it matches other weapons. So yeah, stability handling without order, yep. Alright, this is a big change of Fusion Rifles, including all exotic fusions, so we'll be watching for any major issues. Alright, exotics. Um, Anarchy looks like it's getting nerfed here. Uh, reduced total reserve plus magazine ammunition from 26 to 16. So that's like really, really low ammo now. Um, reduced damage by by 30% by burst bosses. Okay, that's crazy. All right, so that's no more uh, boss killer and has a lot, a lot less ammo. Xenophage, reduce rate of fire from 120 to 90, so uh, rate of fire nerf, and you really see less ammo. 
of Xenophage. All right, in PV. Fighting Lion is always fun, but not dominant in PVE. However, enabling fast unlimited grenade spam was too much in PVP based on internal playlists. So we've just the uh, specific case. All right, Fighting Lion reserve ammo increased from a lot to infinite. What? Okay, it receives the same change as other breach grenade launchers though. Oh, okay, so it just got damaged, nerfed a bunch. Reached base reload stat to zero. Okay, so it has zero reload, very, very slow now. Now increased reload speed to its previous level on damaging multiple enemies with one grenade. I. Let's own subreddit. All right. All right. Um, Vex Mythoclast. All right. Cautioning us about this one. We don't want to lower some break PvP balance. All right. PvE damage was increased by 40%. So Vex is now 40% more better in PvE. Range stat increased to near best for high impact assault rifle. So ranges increase a lot. Stability increased a lot. Rework house grant stability and damage after a kill. Okay, that's crazy. Increased damage from 360 to 90. Increased rate of fire. Oh my god. And the fire is up. Holy. Recently refused rifle mod charge time from 850 to 533. Okay, that's crazy. That's a crazy buff. I'm right, merciless. So we've we had to touch this anyway because the future rifle changes. I figured we were in there, so might as well make a buff. We've been thinking about updated perk to account for fewer shots per burst, so it should build up charge rate at the same amount per burst as before. Reduce penalty. Uh, reduce the damage penalty for increasing charge rate by forty percent. Oh, okay. That's that's kind of crazy right now. For real. I Jotin. Because how this change charge time will work with future rifle changes, we made a small change to avoid breaking this weapon. Uh, reduce charge time from 0.82 to 0.78. Slightly reduce damage per shot. Okay, that's good. Slightly reduce damage, but it can fire faster. It's really annoying. So, pretty annoying. Alright, Bastion. Here we go. Please. Bastion feels very strong with shotguns being less dominant. So, we're completely uh, preemptively adjusting in PvP. It's super low use in PvP, so we're buffing it now. Reduce damage by 50%. Can now not quite kill a guardian with one shot in the three bursts. Oh, let's go. Let's go, dude. Okay, so you cannot you cannot fully kill somebody with a bastion shot. That's actually perfect. Screw bastion. I hate it so much. Reduce damage by 15%. Can now not quite kill a guardian with one shot in the three shots. So you have to charge up twice. Increase spend angle by 10%. Great. Thank you. It's it's now dead in PvP. Good job. PvE is 25% buff though, so you can use that in PvE. Sweet business. Now it fills magazine on picking up special ammo heavy. Okay, cool. I perks firing line. We like the idea of this perk. We're just giving away a little bit too much damage for almost free. This damage was to plus 20% for precision damage and roll on snipers and other guns. I certain damage perks only affected impact damage on explosive weapons. These specific perks and detonation damage. I kill clip rampage adrenaline were not affected. All right, it's fine. VFX. Change some audio, cool. Near future, we're devoting, okay, right here. We're devoting a lot of energy to Witch Queen expansion, and there are a ton of things changing in a few weeks, so we want to see how things shake out before trying on further tuning. We'll be watching season 15 closely, and we're ready to make some small adjustments as needed in the first half of the season. I right, the more distant future, oh my god, they're doing more stuff, uh, but still here before Witch Queen. All right. Linear fusion rifles and caster frame swords were, are still not where we want them to be. Expect some tweaks. We're also looking at some underused, underpowered exotics. Um, Arbalist is now underused. Then don't just buff Arbalist again, there's no point. Arbalist, Soros Regime, Crassesia, Malthesis, and more. If you have issues with spamming high rate of fire, same amount of as fast as possible, we've got something that works for you. Oh, no way. High rate of fire, same amount. Okay. Priming a target and quickly swapping. For cleanups is easy than we'd like. We're looking for options for building towards faster swap speed. Priming a target and quickly swapping for a cleanup is easier than we'd like. And we're looking at options for building towards faster swap speeds. We gotta step at hitting both these the points coming. Wait, what? Okay. Alright, Wish Queen Beyond. We've talked previously about wanting legendary weapons to have more identity based on their source. And expect to ship a new system for this in quarter close to the Witch Queen. In season 15, we tweaked exotic primary weapons to generate ammo faster through our ammo finders and had another change plan to make them more exciting in PvE content. That's all we got for weapon changes for now. We're looking forward to see how PvP and PvE metas shape up once we have all of them in hands. Chris, alright, guns, guns, guns. Alright, this is going to be closer. We are still holding a lot of details on season reactive close to the chest, including the new season 15 arsenal. You'll discover next week. I want to show some other weapons you'd like to earn. Next season's ritual quest is a rocket launcher with explosive light. Okay, 
So it's an exotic, it's a uh, legendary rock launcher is the new uh, pinnacle, whatever, uh, uh, sorry, ritual weapon, cool. Uh, we're adding three weapons as post-game rewards for completing Vanguard Strikes ga uh, Gamma Crucible matches. These will drop randomly after completing these activities with random rolls. You sneak peek, so scout rifle, auto, and a sidearm, as it looks like for those. We also have plans for freshening up the loot pool of the Prophecy Dungeon. We've been seeing a lot of feedback to bring forward weapons, original reward from the Trials of Nine. I thought adding these nine theme weapon dungeon was a fit. Nice. These weapons have been upgraded with random rolls, and certain ones will drop from specific counters of Prophecy. Great, great, great. Good stuff. Prophecy is uh, now relevant again. On top of all these weapons, we're also updating the world pool with some fresh drops. Here, here are new weapons you can expect to see pop in the wild. All right, they added the, the sniper. I don't know what that is. It's one of the old snipers, the pulse. Oh, they have a really, the, that's the rapid fire SMG, I think. So the pulse rifle. Finite impact. Wait, what's this? No, the annual skate. Oh, they had the annual skate back, I think. That's pretty nice. It's been a nice hand cannon, hopefully. Uh, the vice uh, auto rifle and one of the side arm. Right. Relief efforts. Uh, Bungie Foundation. All right, so there's something happening there uh, for relief and stuff. COVID. All right, so if you donate $25, you get a cool emblem here. Cool. Shirt, cool. Uh, more emblems, more stuff. All right, Bungie Artists. What else? What else? What else? All right, cool, cool. I think I said it, guys. It might be it. Um, we're up to the new change of the season. Update 3.0. This is August 24th. All right, guys. So the next update is on Tuesday. All that stuff that we just said. Um, this is gonna be cracked, bro. It's gonna be cracked. Claiming rewards, crossplay names, early this season redacted. All right, cool, cool. All right, nice. No issues. All right, all right. And movie of the week. Cool, cool, cool. And five more sleeps until the reveal. All right, there we go, guys. That's the twad there. What do you guys think? Um, next week we're gonna have the uh, huge reveal. I might stream that live stream that while watching for reaction. We'll see. But a uh, huge reveal for Witch Queen and uh, next season. So I'll see you guys in a bit. All right. Take care. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, and I'll uh, see you guys for another video. Peace out.